Still out here on the beautiful hike this morning. And I want to talk to you about the different types of New Testament ministries. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 through 31. Uh, you can read that. Pause the video and read it. But it lists basically nine different ministries, different gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Ephesians chapter 4 also talks about um, different ministries and things. Um, we're not going to go there. Um, but you can. there's a few others, evangelists and pastors, that are listed in Ephesians 4 that are not in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But basically there are nine different gifts. Interesting because there are nine different aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. Hmm, interesting. But in 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 31, it lists uh, apostles, prophets, teachers, working of miracles, gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And so, duck underneath some trees here. Uh, and so those are the different gifts that are out there. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and so those are different types of ministries. Well, let's go through that list. First you have apostles. Do we need apostles anymore? Well, no. The uh, apostolic sign gifts were there to confirm the word to the Jews in the first century. The Jews require a sign according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Uh, they rejected Jesus as their Messiah. And as a result, now the um, sign gifts have been paused. I do believe that they will come back in the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, but right now, we don't have sign gifts. That's not something that um, you should try to mess with. Some people would disagree with me, but um, you know, there are ones that you can fake, and then there are ones that you can't fake. And the ones that you can fake, this uh, speaking in tongues thing, where they come along and they're and whatever, that's just faking it, okay? Speaking in tongues in the New Testament is a language. All of a sudden, you know, you can't speak uh, Hebrew or something, and all of a sudden you can. And there's a bunch of Jewish people standing around all the way through the book of Acts. It's always, there's always Jewish people around whenever people speak in tongues. Hmm. But, you know, you speak, these people will be standing around, these Jews, and the Christians, the early Christians, would start speaking in Hebrew, even though it's not their native tongue. That's what the gift of tongues is. And um, you go from the miraculous apostolic gift of tongues in the book of Acts till you get to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14, the tongues are talking about languages. Okay, both are talking about languages, but what I'm saying is the one in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 is talking about somebody that has a gift of learning other languages and speaking in those other languages and the uh, interpretation of tongues. You don't see interpretation of tongues at all in the book of Acts. So understand the difference there. But um, you have some people that have a real talent and ability with different languages. And you can have those people work on Bible translations into other languages, um, getting tracks made and whatever else to reach out to, other, to people of other tongues and um, get the gospel to them. So, very interesting. But, um, so the apostolic sign gifts, miraculous healing, speaking in tongues, things like that, well, they've gone. We don't have any apostles anymore. Unless you're a charismatic kooky, kooky bird and you're calling yourself an apostle, um, which is nonsense. But then next we have prophets. Now, um, you can't prophesy on the same level of the sign gift thing that was given in the first century. But there are many times that you can say certain things because you know what the scripture says and the scripture is pointing at certain events happening and you can prophesy that. I have done that over the years in this ministry and God has given me that ability to prophesy certain events. And I've had people that will write me and they'll say, Brother Brian, it's really wild. I mean, you might not even remember this, but there was actually a time when you said 
you know, sermon you did years ago, and you actually came out and said, this is going to happen, and it happened. Well, all glory goes to the Lord for that. I'm not special. It's just one of the gifts that the Lord has given me. The ability to see some future events coming and to talk about it. But the real gift that God has given me is to be a teacher, a teacher of the Word of God. And that's something that the Lord has placed in my heart to do. And I've done uh, well over 2,000 videos now over the years and teaching a variety, large variety of different subjects. And um, because that's what the Lord has had me do. Uh, working of miracles. I was questioned on that a while back. What do you think about that, brother? Is that for today? Well, the Bible says it is. <laughs> it doesn't say, well, all these gifts are there, you know, but, you know, I mean, I guess you could try to make it into some kind of a thing of an apostolic type of a thing. But I think personally that they're, uh, it's kind of given in there. So I don't know. I have, that's kind of a controversial thing. I don't know what to say about it, to be very frank with you. Um, you can watch my study on the thing of working of miracles for today, whatever. I can't think of the exact title, what it's called. But um, now I go up the big hill. So I'll just give it a minute here so I can catch my breath because I know how people hate to hear me be out of breath when I climb. You know, I never see any of these people that complain. That's what I have to go up, that rock thing there. I never see anybody complaining about me breathing heavy in a video, posting a video of them doing this. <laughs> when you walk and talk, there's uh, just the, the difficulty of walking along and carrying a camera and talking. Uh, but I know some people out there are just in perfect physical shape and they expect me to be as well. And if I'm not in perfect peak physical condition, then they shouldn't watch the video or something or whatever. <laughs> um, what about gifts of healings? Notice it says gifts, plural, of healings, plural. It is not the same thing as a miraculous be healed, laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's not what's going on there. Gifts, plural, of healings, plural. What does that mean? Well, there's a lot of ways to heal people. Of course, uh, prayer is very important. But you also have the thing of nutritional health. I can heal a lot of people nutritionally just by telling you what to eat and what not to eat. Um, exercise is obviously important. I'm doing that right now. But uh, there's chiropractic type of stuff, there's herbal health, there's nutritional health, uh, harvesting wild edibles. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can do to get yourself in really good shape and to heal yourself. So uh, again, that's not what I do all the time, but I do have some ability in the area of gifts of healing, healings, um, helps. There are some people that have a great ability. They don't really want to teach. They don't want to preach, uh, but they're very good at helping. Hey brother, where should I put this? Or what should I do with that? Or whatever. That's a good gift. Uh, governments, uh, that is one I definitely lack in. I'm not the best at uh, running a ministry, at getting things done and whatever else, uh, organizing things and, and whatever. I want to be able to read and study and put together sermons. If you have some health issues, I'll help you with that, give you some ideas of what's coming in the future, but government as a gift, not really. Um, but there are some people that administratively are very good at things like that, and they can really organize great work for the Lord. And praise the Lord for those who can do that. And um, so that's great. Down there's the trail. Whew. A little bit tricky to hike with all this stuff on too. 
but I will continue. What about diversities of tongues and interpretation of tongues? Well, I already kind of talked about that. Uh, there are Christians that can speak multiple languages and they're very good at learning those languages. And uh, I've known Christians from other countries that they can understand what I'm saying to them in English, but they just don't have the ability to speak back in English. They're very, they're not confident or whatever, and they don't want to speak in English. And so there are other people that they will understand that person's tongue and they will interpret it to me. Um, I've been in other countries where the people do not speak English and I've dealt with people in America that don't speak English. And it's nice to have somebody there that can do the interpretation of tongues if I can't understand them. So those are the different gifts that are given. And um, as far as the thing of teaching, which would be the main gift I believe that God has given me, try to do this without sliding. It's a little bit slippery out here this morning because of frost on the ground and it melts, then it gets slippery. But um, the issue of teaching, uh, I have taught um, in multiple church buildings over the years. Uh, that was what I originally felt my calling was. I wanted to be part of a good New Testament local church uh, before I realized the issues with them. They're not in scripture for a reason. And um, I tried to do that didn't work so good. Um, and so then I came up with the idea of, well, maybe I can write booklets. And then it was maybe I can do video. And I started to come up with different ideas, got online, started to put things out online, still here doing that. So um, my battery's getting down there now. Probably don't have a whole lot longer to go here. But um, again, the thing of video. I was producing DVDs for a while and the issue was there, do I sell the DVDs or do I just put the videos online for free? DVDs were always an issue because you have the time limit. Videos online, I can do whatever I want. Hmm. So I went with charity. Instead of saying, well, I'll earn a consistent income from selling videos. Scroll right over here. Instead of, uh, I'm going to earn a consistent income from you know, DVDs, I thought, well, put them online for free. Have some charity here. And that's what I decided to do. Um, and I'll get people, and this is kind of the main point of this video, and they'll write me and they'll say, you know, if I give to your ministry, what do you do for the poor? Say feeding the poor or going and helping people that had storm damage or whatever else. What do you do, Brian? Um, well, uh, that's not the purpose of this ministry. Okay, there are different ministries out there. I cannot, uh, I mean, if there's certainly, if there's people in the area that needed help, I'd probably try to do that, but I am not a charity in the sense of going and giving out free Bibles, going and giving out lots of free stuff. In order for that to happen, there has to be money coming in. Um, and, you know, I, the money that comes in to this ministry, it comes from people who have been blessed by the videos and who say, hey, you know, I've learned a lot from you and the Lord's placed it in my heart to donate to the ministry. See, it's not, I'm gonna give you money so that you can go out and do some other thing with it. No, I've already done the thing. I've already had charity to put out free teaching um, out there and you've benefited from that. You've been blessed by it. That's why people give to the ministry. Okay, again, I could have, you know, gone and try to teach at some seminary someplace, but then you're paying money to get in there. Many thousands of dollars to get in and learn what I can teach you free online. So it's, it's a decision that I had to make. Am I going to have fervent charity and give my videos out for free, understanding that some people will take of my labors, the flock will uh, benefit from me being a shepherd to it, but then they'll go out and then they won't give me the milk of the flock like the Bible teaches. Um, they which preach the gospel are to live of the gospel. Um, 
there will be people that do that. But then there will be those who say, hey, you fed me, I'm going to feed you. Make sure that you are taken care of because it's a full-time job. Studying the way that I do. I mean, I could just, you know, hey, forget you people. I'm going to go out and with my wife and son and my dog and enjoy a hike and uh, not have to be all winded here because I'm carrying my camera bag. Um, no, I could just be out here doing my thing, but I bring the camera along so I can be teaching the Word of God as I'm hiking with my family. I make sacrifices. I could spend my money in better ways many times, but I have to buy books. I have to buy research materials. And the people that donate to the ministry, they help that to happen. So that I can study and I can say, okay, here I have, I have proof. I can show you the proof. That's what I do. You know, and it would be totally inconsiderate to come to a ministry, a peep, you know, some people, some Christians that get together and they're taking supplies to the poor and whatever, giving, you know, feeding the poor and whatever, and go to them and say, so when are we going to hear the, you know, big detailed sermon on whatever subject? They'd say, well, we're busy doing this, you know, feeding the poor thing. Uh, we're, this is not a teaching ministry. And they would be right. That'd be totally fine. But then people will come and they'll turn it around and they'll say, Brother Brian, when are you feeding the poor? When are you doing all this other stuff? Uh, I can't. <laughs> okay, I cannot just go out and do a whole bunch of work like that. Uh, I have to spend my time studying and researching and reading the Bible, reading lots of other books. That stuff takes time. It's a full-time job. People say, well, you should have a job and do the ministry thing. Okay, if I do that, then the ministry goes away. If I have to make a living some other way, I don't have time. I, you know, there's only so many hours in a week. You know, right now I work six or seven days a week. It's crazy the, the hours that we put in, you know? And so I uh, just wanted to put this out there just to explain some things because I've seen this thing with people, you know, they're blessed by the videos, but they don't feel called to give to the ministry. Okay. Um, be like going to a restaurant and saying, hey, I was, that was a really good meal, but I don't feel like paying for it. All right. Okay, well, you know, for those of you out there that have donated, I mean, anything that you've given to the ministry, thank you. I don't get a chance to thank everybody individually, but um, those who have been blessed, I thank you very mu much for, you know, do donating to the ministry. Those of you that watch video after video and you don't give anything, um, well, that's between you and God. I can't do anything to stop you. I can't you know, block you from my channel or whatever else. I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> Tried the Patreon thing. Hey, I'm just going to allow certain people in here and others I won't allow in here. Oh uh, yeah, that didn't work. People were coming in, stealing videos and doing all kinds of stuff. It's ridiculous. It was a waste of my time. Um, that's why I don't do Patreon. Uh, and YouTube defended the people that were coming in and stealing the videos. Pretended it wasn't illegal or wasn't against their policies. Okay, uh, my channel, if it was bigger and secular, you would be all over the people that are doing that and shut their channels down, but whatever. So uh, that's what this ministry is. Just to explain it from the perspective of the New Testament, this is a teaching ministry and a little bit of healing and a little bit of prophecy. Um, those three different gifts are what the Lord has blessed me with. And um, thank you to everybody out there, like I said, that donates. Um, for those of you who don't, um, that's between you and God. Um, just that simple. So that is going to be it. I have to get here to the top of the hill. And um, trying to go slow so my heavy breathing doesn't offend people. <laughs> but uh, just wanted to put this thing out there to explain myself a little bit better. So we will see you in upcoming videos. As always, thank you very much for watching.